ready to get started? Call to order the regular scheduled meeting of the Wednesday, September 1st, Board of Zoning Adjustment. We'll do a roll call vote. Drew Goodner. Here. Ross Rollins. Here. Amy. Here. Tim White. Here. Clint Wilson. Here. John Huff. Here. Letitia Khalif. Here. We will do the approval of minutes. Anybody have any comments on the minutes from August 4th? We do approve the minutes from August 4th. Second. Drew Goodner. Yes. Ross Rollins. Emmy Sorrells. Yes. Tim White. Yes. Clint Wilson. Yes. I have an opening remark to read. Read. Any persons aggrieved by any decision of the board may within 15 days after such decision appeal to the circuit court having jurisdiction according to section 908.02 of the zoning ordinance of the city of Auburn, Alabama. We do not have any old business. Uh, for new business, we have PL 20210483. Good evening. This is a request by Lynn Yi, uh, the property owner at 2031 Stephanie Court, for a variance of 11.3% to the impervious surface area to allow an ISR of 86.3% ISR, uh, where the maximum allowed is 75%. Subject property is zone CDD, which allows townhomes. The townhomes were built or started to get built in 20 or 2006 these the particular building that these townhomes are on uh or joined together was built in 2016 so relatively recently the isr is a ratio is a measurement of the uh, total lot area all impervious surfaces including driveways uh, concrete and the foundation for the home divided by the lot size. The lot size is approximately a little over 2,000 square feet, where the minimum size required is 1,800 square feet for a townhome. The um, staff were notified of the potential zoning violation uh, via a complaint from a neighbor where uh, we were notified that additional concrete had been poured in the backyard so we went out to the property to measure the concrete and found that it is in fact over the 75 75% maximum ISR. Uh, so we notified the property owner and spoke with, with uh, them about possible remediation of either removing the concrete um, or replacing it with a uh, pervious surface such as pavers or permeable concrete or gravel. Um, or that they could seek a variance through this, uh, through the variance process. The um, site was approved with drainage plans, so you'll hear more from the property owner and uh, potentially the neighbors about drainage issues in the area. Um, there is drainage flowing onto uh, the property owner's property, and it's intended to go either to the right or the left and either into the city storm inlet or into a private storm inlet and then into the public uh, inlet on the street. There's a photo provided by one of the neighbors of the concrete area. Um, there is kind of a unique situation in that there's multiple neighbors reporting drainage issues. Uh, however, it was designed and approved to meet the city's requirements. Uh, so any changes that were made or, you know, causes of drainage issues at this time are no longer um, re required to be reviewed or looked at by the city. Um, I don't believe there's an HOA for the uh, neighborhood, so there's not a, a real good way for them to, you know, come together and fund a uh, improvement project um, but that really would be the the best solution for the property um, as requested to allow you know allow the concrete to to remain essentially pouring the water onto the adjacent property owners so uh, staff is not recommending approval of the variance the uh, property owners are here if you have any questions for them and i'm happy to answer any other questions 
Thank you. Uh, would the property owner or applicant like to speak? Yes, yeah, you can come up front to the podium and sign in and then you can speak. Reason why we pull concrete because like when we got like heavy rains, the water sit at the background. I mean, at at the backyard, and we have a lot of like the water issues, and also we found snakes on the backyard. So we pull concrete to solve the problem, and I'm not intend to create any problem for my neighbor. And I talked to my uh, uh, the building on the right hand side, and she's totally fine with it. So, you know, so we're just trying to see if we can keep the concrete. So if now we have to remove them. So So when it was gone before, it was just super wet, wet. and soggy there? Yes, yeah? because I don't know, maybe our level is a little bit lower. So all the water comes sit on the ground. And then we can't keep grass on there either. So it's all like mud. So every raining days, we're not able to go out. So it just like puns of water. So is it the, I guess it's that entire back? Entire back, yes. Area right there off of the covered area? Yes. That's what it appears to be. And the retaining wall was it's, already there? That was already there. The okay, wall? Okay, so, and when did y'all, when was this property built? When did y'all purchase it? I, we purchased in, I don't actually remember, probably... But Back it wasn't in, brand new when you bought it, or yes. it was? It yes, was. it was brand new. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, so you wouldn't have had a chance to see whether they built this correctly or not. No, uh-uh. But is this picture your property? Yes. Okay. But the photograph wasn't... Are you Anna? No, I'm Anna. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm Eileen's sister. Eileen's right there. Uh -huh. And I live in his house, and he lives in my house. Which is twenty twenty three Stephanie Court. Gotcha. We move out to stay in different houses since you know the pandemic. Yeah. So I own another property in that um, condo area. Uh, my property address is two zero two three Stephanie Court, and we got the same problem. This is why I'm here today. So if we can got that, you know, if we are permitted to stay with the concrete, then I'm gonna keep both property with the concrete. If not, we have to remove both properties. So, yeah, we got the same problem with that property, too. That's why I pull, you know, concrete at both property to solve it. You know, at least we can go out. And then when you see the middle part, we keep a drain niche, you know, a little bit um, drainage um, in the middle. And you still not solving the problem. I don't know. And Anna say she's been having a bad time with the water. So she, we, we, we talk. And then I was questioning, even though I removed all the concrete, she's probably still experiencing the same problem. I'm not sure. So what if, what if I remove all the concrete and we both experiencing the same problem, what are we gonna do? Okay. So this is my concern. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you know, I'd like to speak in favor um, uh, for or against this variant? Yes, you can come up and sign in and speak your name. Uh, while I talk, uh, uh, there will be a video and uh, some pictures. Um, okay, this house, uh, first of all, I think uh, uh, 2031 was uh, uh, so put on sale last year. Anyway, my name is Anna Chiafele and I live on Stephanie Court 2029. I moved into this property in May 2019. Lin Ye poured down concrete on September 16, 2020, 16 months after my moving. Since that day, my property has been severely flooded. This has been a constant threat to my property and not simply a nuisance. Let's keep in mind one thing. The entire backyard of Stephanie Court 2031 is covered with impervious material and there is a French drain ending under my property line, at my property line. My neighbor's patio affected my property in two ways. 
One, the backyard of Stephanie Court 2031 does not absorb water anymore. Therefore, its water runs off into the adjacent properties. A French drain ends on my property line. All her water is diverted into my property. The roof water of all these eight townhomes is poured directly into our backyards and is not collected underground through pipes. My yard is only 15 feet long. This is barely enough to absorb my own water. I do not need the water of Lane Ye. Second, the concrete patio created a dam, D-A-M. Before September 2020, I could see a river of water running through the yards, but it was a river of water running through the yards, and the water would not stay in my yard more than a couple of hours. It would be absorbed. The roof water of, uh, no, sorry. I could see um, the water would run through our backyards towards the end of the cool de sac. This was a nuisance, not a threat. Now the water coming from Stephanie Court 2023, 2025, 2027 stops in my yard since the patio has created a five, six inch dam that does not allow any water passage. Miss Zhu told me that my property is the only one with such a problem and suggested I should add soil to my yard. Stephanie Court 2033, she stated, does not have water in its yard. Well, that makes sense. Stephanie Court 2033 receives part, part of the runoff. However, its water can still run towards the end of the street where the public inlet is located. Since September 2020, there has been much more water in my property than it used to be, and it stays there for days. It even entered the storage room and reached the house back door. It never happened before in the 16 months I lived there before. The water and humidity have caused damage to my living room. I can pull up my floor. In sum, I would be very grateful to the city of Auburn if it denied the variance. Stephanie Court 2031 has violated the ISR and for 11 months and two weeks, Lin Ye has been using my property as her own personal toilet without giving any thought to the harm caused to others. As the applicant stated, she poured down concrete and added a French drain, quoting from the document prepared by Mr. Kip, to help remove stormwater from her property, end quote, and to divert that water into her neighbor's yard. Please do not grant Lin Yi such a privilege. They're gutter, excuse me, ma'am. Are there gutter and downspouts on the back of the property, or is it just running off the roof line into the backyard? Can you please repeat slowly? Hi. Gutters. Yes, sir. And downspouts. Yes, sir. Are they on the back of your buildings? Uh, yes, yeah, yes, they're on the back of the building, and they don't go underground. So all the water is uh, just pulling down on the surface of the yard. Okay. Yeah, they like are not gutter. like, for example, do you know the townhomes, the, uh, uh, the new townhomes built uh, on Gatewood, uh, the gutter, the downspout is underneath. I yes, mean, so I'm from, I understand. Yeah, but here, unfortunately, they didn't plan it this way. Okay, thank you. Thanks. <clears throat> Anyone else want to speak in favor or against this variance? Well, good evening to everyone. Um, I am a new neighbor having moved in just two months to 2027 Stephanie Court, which is directly adjacent to Anna. So um, I think it was maybe two weeks ago um, after having some very heavy rains. Um, what happens in my yard is that I'm flooded as well, um, but not to the degree that Anna's property is being flooded. Uh, and it was always a concern, um, having noticed that the, the water is just not going anywhere. So as you had asked, the, um, the gutters, it's, it's just 
reaching right out on the property. With the rains that we had recently, um, I was very concerned that I could potentially be flooded because it really went very high up to um, the level of my patio. I don't have any concrete. Um, there's very little um, grass in the back of my yard. And um, so it's very muddy with a lot of little creatures that are enjoying <laughs> their stay. And I don't like them, but that's besides the point. Um, I, if, you know, what, I don't know my um, neighbors in 2020, um, sorry, 2031. I haven't had an opportunity to meet them or 2020 or 2033, but it would be great if um, there is just a coming together to solve whatever this issue is. And if this is going to be a problem for Anna, it's a problem for me because her water is coming into my yard with the addition of whatever water is already flowing into my yard from my own gutters. So um, I would respectfully ask if you could consider denying um, the request to keep the surface. Um, and if there's anything that the city could do beyond that, that would help all eight um, neighbors, that would be great because the planning certainly was not um, in favor of having situations like this. So um, this is my first home and I'm really concerned that I could have a potential flooding, which was not something that I was hoping to see. It's my investment, so I would hope that um, something can be done in future. You, Thank can I ask you a I'm question? Sorry. Do you have the same the retaining wall? Does yours Actually, look unlike that? I do not have okay. a retaining wall. So I just have um, some, I, I know, it's like a, I don't Does know how to describe it. Does it slope down towards it's, your it's house? Yes, that's down. right. Oh, okay. It slopes down and it's got um, a lot of coverage on it, on, on it right now okay. with um, very, some grass, but a lot of mud okay. right now. So I can't, I, I don't really go out in the back of my yard. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for the public hearing? We'll close the public hearing and open it up to the board for discussion and or a motion. <clears throat> so I've had some experience with run or water runoff, whether it's purposely or not purposely, and it kind of goes into old water wars conversation. So if she has changed from her place and run off to her neighbors, then that's a that's a whole different issue between them so that's certainly something we don't need to get into and we we didn't build it now that if it was approved and done as the city said it it's a terrible design quite frankly but that's not for us to decide well but they did come in and build this after the fact Say again? They came in and built this extra slab after the fact. No, but what I'm saying to you, if everything's sloping down and they got a retaining wall here and all the water's not draining out like it's supposed to be and all the downspouts are coming in this little area and I'm sure it doesn't get sun all day, it's going to remain wet and that's what their issue is. Yes. And that's... That's a design flaw. Correct. Or an implementation flaw. Correct, and there's a number of ways that that can be addressed, and the way that they chose has violated the impervious surface ratio. I'm a, I agree. I'll make a motion to deny PL 2021-00483. Second. Drew Goodner? Yes. Ross Rollins? Yes. Emmy Sorrells? Yes. Kim White? Yes. Clint Wilson? Yes. All right, up next is PL 2021-00523. inches to the minimum required side yard setback of 14 feet in the neighborhood conservation district of NC 15 uh, to allow an addition of the home to be 6 feet 2 inches from the east property line. Um, this addition would also result in a variance needed for the total side yard setback of 30 feet um, to allow the total side setbacks to be 21 feet 2 inches. As stated, the property is within the Neighborhood Conservation NC15 District, just off South Cary Drive. It is surrounded by other similarly zoned properties. 
This is a site layout of showing the existing home and the section in red is the portion of the addition that would encroach on that 15 foot setback. Um, this is the floor layout of the home. The entire red area is the addition um, that they're looking to build, um, but the only the portion to your very left would be the portion that would encroach into the side yard setback. They've provided elevations um, to show what it may look like. Uh, the top portion is what the east side property owner, um, the neighbor, would see. And then the bottom section is what the addition would look like from the rear of the home. Um, this is an aerial photography of the site. You can see there are a lot of trees present um, in between the homes as well. And a photo from the front of the house on the side which the addition would be placed. Um, staff does feel that because of the angle of the lot and the angle of the home and the addition that minimal impacts would be made um, and seen from the road. We have received communication from the property owner directly next to this property that would uh, be on the same side as the addition and they seem to be in favor of it and don't feel that it will impact their property um, or their view in their own yard as well. Um, I believe the applicant, Mr. Hooper, is here this evening and I'd also be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hooper, would you like to come speak? Good evening. Uh, I'm Davis Hooper, um, as mentioned. Um, the uh, So I am representing uh, Kat and Kevin uh, Bobo uh, on this uh, on this home. And the, uh, so on two addition, uh, in addition to the information you provided, um, you know, the reason that we are uh, wanting to proceed with this addition is when this home was built, it was built in 1952, and owner suites and bathrooms were not that um, uh, ideal at that era when this home was built. So that was the reason why they wanted to proceed with, uh, with the addition. Um, all the bedrooms are the same, and each bedroom shares a bathroom. Um, and uh, so that was the reason why we moved forward uh, with this. And the due diligence that was done on this was uh, several different meetings with the architect on site going through it and uh, not necessarily figuring out what would be the easiest, but the best layout of the, uh, of the uh, lot itself or the home itself with the kitchen being on the right side and the dining room. Um, this was really the, the most, uh, not easiest option, but the, the option that made the most sense. Um, for the uh, for the variance request, um, the uh, um, but lots of meetings were gone into it to decide this layout, um, and uh, so um, the uh, and any time in Cary Woods, you know, reviving these original homes of Auburn, I think, is an asset. People invest money in it to uh, to bring it back to life, so to speak. And so, between the architect and the surveyors and everything, this is what. Um, we uh, wanted to present to see if we could uh, be allowed the uh, the variance. So, Davis, is the material building material the same? We're yes. doing the same yeah. like it's brick gonna, exterior. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's uh, it's going to be exterior uh, uh, to match existing roofing and uh, side veneer, um, and uh, so uh, the backyard elevation. I mean, why can you not go further back? On if. Uh, so on the, the layout with the different bedrooms there, we're basically just extending off that last bedroom. So with, if you could, I, you know, it's, it's a little bit tough to see, but there's a bedroom and then a share in that bathroom and then another bedroom. So what we're doing is just extending basically off that existing bedroom um, to create the bathroom. Right. Why, why can you not go out back? Um, can you uh, elaborate? just you know like just extending it to moving making one bedroom non-existent and going out the back or just going out back so you don't have to ask for the variance 
what is prohibiting? What is the what is the land making you do to be able to come in here and ask for the variance? Is my question. There's so underneath. There's a basement that's here right now, and there's a door also to the right under that bathroom. So if we did move it to the right and go over it, there's an exit. That's where the back of the basement daylights. So then that would then either close off that egress of the basement or, um, you know, create, I guess, uh, you know, you could do a poured wall hallway to extend it out. But then as the door goes out where it daylights, that grade starts to go back up. There's actually a set of stairs of about six, six steps in the back. So when you say it daylights, you just mean that's where egress. you can, yeah, you can exit. It's not like there's a walkout basement mm -hmm. or with a patio or anything like that. That's right. That's or right. a living area. Mm -mm. No, it's just, it goes out and then there's stairs that continue. Where's the elevation? Can you go back to the elevation? Is there a contour map? Oh, there's a door there. Are y'all yeah. adding that door? No, that door is existing. Is that the one you're talking about? Mm -hmm. And if you could imagine where the grade is, that grade's a little bit off. It actually goes about close to the top of that door the further you go out and those stairs walk up to the existing grade. you would lose or you would have to change or eliminate basement ingress egress if we went out the back correct or you move the door to or the you side move the door to the side and that's actually when it starts to that basement is only in that section if you go into that door and took an immediate left then that starts to open up into like the crawl space area and that pat there is a patio behind that fireplace and those that grade elevation is a, is a tad bit off so as you go there that 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 grade is about at that door as it comes so across. that basement isn't accessible from the inside it is it is there's a spiral staircase on the inside that goes down oh so does it go connect to the bedroom then not to the bedroom mm -mm or whatever towards the front there. of the house almost in between the front of the house and the back there's a hallway and that's okay. where it comes out at okay and like as mentioned there wouldn't be any trees taken down or anything like that there are a lot of trees over there but um none of them would have to come out so you could go back I think theoretically, yeah, I think, I mean, you could go back, um, but um, I don't know, you know, with the changing of the, you know, the bedrooms, I don't know how, if that would sacrifice a bedroom that's, that's there, or if you just, you know, make that bedroom into an, you know, tad bit of an L shape or, you know, as you go back out. But I think if you really were seeing it on the site, the site and you saw a topo, um, you know, it would, it would probably make a little bit more sense um, than the way I'm explaining it. More questions for Davis? I mean, what would you say the elevation change is? And from which points? From the point that the, so let's say from the point that the So like the, I would say from the bottom of the door that's existing in the basement and probably 12 feet out, um, you know, it would probably increase around eight to nine feet or so. And the stairs are already what? There's like six stairs there. Um, as, uh, as you go up, like outside, mm -hmm. I don't know the exact count, but yeah, probably, probably Maybe six. Four yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, at least Thank six. You. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Davis. Is there anyone who'd like to speak for or against this variance? I'll open the public hearing. Don't see anyone. Close the public hearing and open up for the board for a motion and or discussion and or a motion. like to 
go on record and say I'm inclined to approve it. It's not going to be any material changes to the neighbors to, that will be the most impacted are totally in favor of it. Their letter is attached at the end of our packet. And if, as long as the, I would say we can condition it right on the, mm -hmm. the plans being what was submitted. Like, okay. And Mr. then also Chairman? that the building material would be matching. Just for the record, there in the staff report at the very bottom under the recommendation, it does say, should the board vote to approve this, that we did offer three recommended conditions of approval. Oh, I did okay. One of those so covers one of then. your okay, points. Perfect. So I just wanted to point it out to you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. So I'm sorry, did we get a letter from, uh, is that 231? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that email at the back. Yeah, they printed out the letter for it. How far is that house off the property line? Just wondering. Uh, it's, I've been to that house several times. It's fair. I mean, it's, I think it complies as is. They've got a nice little pool out back and a porch, but I know on that, when you pull in from the street on the left, so I guess our right's got plenty of room. And then on that side, I don't know. I think that's, I think their master is right there. And then there's a little pool, I'd say 14 to 16 feet, something like that. But it may not be that much, I'm not sure. A good bit of trees there. I think we're I think we're seeing more and more of these as which I don't think it's a bad thing, but as these homes become remodeled and people try to add on and make them a little more up to date. I don't know when this one was last remodeled. It was obviously built what, seventy years ago. I think the lots pinch a little bit where they are. I, I get it, but in this neighborhood, in this area, I mean, the lots are big. And, and so there are other alternatives that they can do because then that's fine that they're not going to take off the current neighbor of this area, but then all of a sudden the neighbors can come in and say, hey, what happened? We're just here to decide what's happening currently not what could happen in the future <laughs> I would, if i had to, a crystal ball i would make I, a lot more money than i, I did right you. now I, don't, I know we're here to dictate if the land is the issue i mean i thought i read somewhere that there wasn't another option um the position it's under d the position of the existing house on lot does not provide an alternative location for the expansion to make the house more livable and functional and more in line with today's construction standards. But it also says there's no unnecessary hardship. Which is a key word. I will make a motion to approve PL 2021-00523. First request of a variance of seven feet, 10 inches um, conditioned on construction shall substantially follow the plans provided the board, HOA approval and exterior, external materials are to match the existing building. Second. Drew Goodner. Yes. Ross Rollins. Yes. Emmy Sorrells. Yes. Kim White. Yes. Wilson. I'll make a motion to approve PL 2021-00523, a um, variance of 8 feet 10 inches to the minimum required total side setbacks. Conditioned on construction shall, st shall substantially follow the plans provided to the board. If applicable, HOA approval shall be solicited and external materials are to match the existing building. Second. Drew Goodner? Yes. Ross Rollins? Yes. Emmy Sorrells? Yes. Kim White and Wilson. Yes. All right. Thank you all for coming. We are adjourned. <laughs>